Look at these lush green leaves that are so easily growing in my balcony. Look at this size. It's more than the size of my palm. Do you know what this plant is? By the way, it is one of the best alternatives for palak or spinach that we commonly know of. What makes this spinach alternative so useful and valuable? And would you like to know how to grow this in your balcony? So, you need to watch right until the mull point to get all the answers. But before we begin, let me harvest this Indian spinach. In south and western parts of India, only the leaves of this plant are harvested and used. But in West Bengal, Bengalis love to eat the stem too along with the leaves. So today I am going to be harvesting the stem and the leaves and cook it for you the Bengali way. So let's begin. Let me first pluck these leaves. That's enough of leaves. Now let me harvest the stem. So here this is the stem with the leaves. So I am just cutting the stem and we will separate the leaves later on. See how generously it has grown. It has grown outside my balcony. Here. Here. So I am going to cut this. Look at this bounty of Indian spinach. Most commonly it is also called as Malabar spinach or Basela. Other common English names are wine spinach, climbing spinach or Ceylon spinach. In Bengali, Hindi and Gujarati it is also called as Pui Saag or Pui Bhaji. In Marathi it is called Mayalu. But in South India, names are more interesting. In Tamil Nadu, it is called as Kodi Pasalai and in Telugu, it is called Bachali Kora. So, did the name Basela originate from its South Indian name? Malabar spinach is a heat tolerant, fast growing perennial vine native to tropical southern Asia. This plant probably originated in India or Indonesia. But today, it is widely grown across Southeast Asia, Africa, Caribbean and even in South America because Basila adapts to a variety of climates. There are two very common varieties, one with a green stem and another with red or purple stem. Scientifically, they have been classified as different species. Basila alba is the green one and Basila rubra is the red one. However, many scientists feel that the two color forms of Vesela are just one species. Let us now ready our harvest for cooking by separating the leaves from the stem. So here let me harvest these leaves from the stem. So just see how generous nature is. So let's wash these leaves and the stem and then chop them. One of the most easy preparations that you can make with these leaves is Pakoda or bhaji. Look at the link above where I have demonstrated mirchi bhaji using big green chilli. You can replace the chilli with these Indian spinach leaves. Making bhaji once in a while is absolutely okay. But there are better ways to derive the health benefits of basela which we will see soon. So now let's look at what are the health benefits of Indian spinach. Traditional medicine and Ayurveda have attributed a lot of medicinal benefits to these greens. Modern science has validated some of these claims and so this is an excellent replacement for regular spinach. Carbs, protein, healthy fats and fiber are of course present. But what makes Malabar spinach very beneficial are the micronutrients. So let's look at some of them. Basela is a good source of vitamin A, vitamin B1, B2, B3, B9, vitamin C and also vitamin E and K. It has many essential amino acids such as arginine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, threonine and tryptophan. 
Some of the minerals found include iron, magnesium and calcium. To top it, Bacilla is rich in antioxidants also. These include flavonoid campiferol, rutin, carotenoids and a group of beneficial phytochemicals called Bacilla saponins. With this wide range of plant nutrients, consuming Malabar spinach has excellent health benefits. Let's look at some of these health benefits. One interesting scientific observation is the ability of some plant chemicals in Bacilla to regulate the activity of the central nervous system to reduce nerve inflammation. This means it has an anti-convulsant, anti-Alzheimer and anti-depressant ability. Bacilla can help expel intestinal worms or parasites and also has antibacterial, antiviral and antifungal properties. Besides, it could even help avoid ulcers, reduce constipation and even have a laxative effect. Campiferol in Bacilla is known to correct immune function. Besides, it has cholesterol lowering, blood sugar regulating, diuretic and mutation and cancer preventing abilities. To top it up, it is also found to have protective effects on the liver and kidneys. Would you not say this is quite a unique combination of benefits? So, what am I going to make today with these greens? I am going to make Pui Saag or Pui Bhaji the Bengali way. Come, let's make. So now I've washed the leaves. Now let me cut this finely. When you cut it, it is slightly slimy. That's okay. So just cut it fine. You can feel the slime a little bit. So before I chop the stem, I am keeping this piece for replanting. So I am leaving about 4 node spaces, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is about 1 feet in length. So I am going to cut this and replant it in the soil. Okay, so this we will replant it. So here first we will cut them into about 3 to 4 inch pieces. So now take each piece and just peel the outer layer, we have to discard this, okay? Otherwise it will prick in the throat, very easily it comes off. Then this becomes very slimy, you know, to touch. So now that we have peeled the outer skin, we will chop them into fine pieces. So now let's make the Pui Saag. So here are the ingredients to prepare our Pui Saag the Bengali way. This is chopped Pui leaves, this is a chopped stem, this is one cup of chopped pumpkin, one medium sized potato chopped, you can even add vegetables like brinjal and sweet potato. Then this is the most important thing for Tadka, the Bengali special Panch Foro. Now these are five ingredients mixed in equal quantities, first is mustard, fenugreek, fennel seeds, then black cumin or kalonji and cumin seeds. And thanks to my dear friend from Kolkata, Bonnie Guharoy, who gave me the recipe of Panch Foro. Then about 2 to 3 tablespoons of mustard oil because it's the Bengali way. 1 teaspoon of chilli powder, 1 teaspoon of turmeric powder, salt to taste and 1 teaspoon of jaggery powder to enhance the flavours of the vegetables and the spices. So let me switch on the gas. You can either use a kadhai, I am using this pressure pan but we are not pressure cooking the vegetable. So now I am lowering the flame, the pan is heated so let me add the mustard oil. Ha, a strong aroma of mustard oil. So let the oil get heated. Once the oil is heated, reduce the flame and I am adding the tadka of the panch foro. Give it a mix. And now first the potatoes. Give it a mix. Now adding this Bacilla stems. Add the turmeric powder, chilli powder, 
the jaggery powder give it a mix and now sprinkle some water so that the potato gets cooked keep it closed for about 5 minutes do not pressure cook it so do not put the weight on so it's almost about 5 to 7 minutes the potatoes are cooking and the stem so here so let's just yeah see the potatoes are softened so now at this stage let me add the pumpkin so now i've added the pumpkins pumpkins do not take much time to cook and now let me add the puri bhaji let's give this a stir this seems like a lot but within 5 to 7 minutes this will all collapse and shrink okay so give this a good stir the salt really looks so delicious let me sprinkle some water that's all and we'll close this and cook for about 5 to 7 minutes you can increase it to high flame for about half a minute to 1 minute and then again sim it so right now it's on high flame so now steam is coming so i'm going to sim the flame and we'll cook it for about 5 to 7 minutes so here let's see whether our puri sag is ready wow what an aroma so here the pumpkin is soft the potato is also soft yes wow so here our bengali style puri sag is ready let me switch off the gas so here my bengali style puri bhaji is ready it looks so yummy and delicious i'm really hungry now i have used indian spinach before but this is the first time that i am making puri bhaji the bengali style let me taste it it's hot mm absolutely delicious and i'm going to have this with hot rice dal and ghee you can even have it with chapatis so my lunch is waiting for me now you already know two ways to use indian spinach are there others let's see other simpler ways to use malabar spinach is to chop them fine and add it to any salad that you're making Another important use is you can mix these leaves into your dal or you can make gravy vegetables like palak paneer or alu palak replacing the palak with indian spinach or puri bhaji how about making the palak card iyer special molagutel recipe using indian spinach leaves what is molagutel check out the molagutel recipe given here and you can replace the vegetable used with puri bhaji The important point to remember is that when basella particularly is cooked tends to be slimy but the slime is also known to have beneficial properties so better make peace with it and enjoy puri bhaji having seen the wonderful health benefits of indian spinach or basella now obviously you will be thinking yes i am ready to use it but Where do I get it from or how do I grow it in my garden or balcony let's mull over it Malabar or Indian spinach is very easy to grow in your backyard or even in a small balcony like this but always remember that since this is a vine you need to make enough provisions for it to climb or creep Growing Malabar spinach is possible in two ways. The first way is very simple. You just have to take a mature stem which has at least 3 to 4 nodes and plant it in moist soil which has enough of compost. I have demonstrated as to how to use a stem cutting for planting in the Hardjod video the link of which is given here.
the second way is to grow them from seed so here are the flowers that are maturing into the seeds you can also source the seed from an online seed supplier the link of one such supplier is given in the description box below so put two to three seeds in a particular spot in the pot which has soil along with compost and there has to be enough moisture and then wait patiently for the seeds to germinate and grow once you got a plant like this you can harvest it once every 2 to 3 weeks and remember to nourish the soil so that your malabar spinach can thrive if you want access to more such insightful videos make sure that you subscribe and press that bell icon if you think that i am adding value to your life then you could support our channel by giving us a super thanks Small financial supports like this encourage us to make more motivating videos for all of you. But at the very least, press that like button to give this video a boost. See you soon in another Manchan Mal episode. Hey, have you subscribed to Manchan Mal? Do click on the subscribe button and press the bell icon to receive notifications of my newest videos uploaded every Saturday.